everybody. I am John Clark. Welcome to the Takeoff Podcast presented by Live Casino Hotel. It is right here in South Philly, right around the complex. Great place to be. And we are here in South Philly at Eagles Training Camp. We finally get to see the 2022 birds on the field. And we've got two great guests, Mike Garofolo from NFL Network and new Eagles cornerback, James Bradbury. I hope you enjoy the conversations. All right, joining us, New Eagles cornerback James Bradbury. Welcome to Philadelphia. Now, what's it like getting acclimated with the team and the defense that Jonathan Gannon plays? Um, I think they make it pretty easy. You know, of course, having Darius Slay around, he loosens up the the, uh, the environment because he's just a funny guy, big personality. Um, of course, we got a lot of veterans around here too, so they make it easy for me. Uh, learning a new scheme, everybody's always communicating on defense, so they make it's pretty smooth right now. So Darius Slay, but he likes to be called Slay, actually, right? He likes to be called Slay. Yeah. I've never called him Darius, yeah. by the way. So. Yeah, he gets upset at everybody. So how much are you learning from him about the defense? I'm learning quite a bit, you know, just sitting in the meeting rooms, uh, listening to him go back and forth with the coach, the coach, of course, installing the defense. I'm learning quite a bit. I remember asking you when you arrived in Philly why you chose the Eagles, and you talked about Jonathan Gannon's system. So what do you like about it? I just enjoy the uh, multiple looks that we that we give. Uh, you know, playing cover four, playing cover two, playing cover three, playing man. You know, I, I'm not just in you know, a um, a one way system to where you only play one coverage. You know, I'm playing multiple coverages. I'm able to use my eyes. I'm able to use my my physical abilities. Now, Slay has told us he does like to play man, mm -hmm. but okay, he's not going to like overdo it with Jonathan Gannon and say we got to do this all the time. What is your preference? I like to play both. Yeah. You know, I feel like if you play a whole lot of a lot of man, um, of course that opens you up and leaves you deceptive to um, explosive plays. Of course, when you play a lot of zone, it opens you up and leaves you to a lot of check down uh, passes and whatnot. So I like to mix it up, kind of keep the quarterback and the uh, other offense on their toes. So when you're out there in camp and you're lining up against A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, and these receivers, first I want to ask you about A.J. Mm -hmm. When I see him, I see this physical guy, big physical guy, but it's amazing how he runs his routes and what are his best traits and characteristics that make him so great? I think, uh, like you said, his strength, um, him being a bigger body receiver, um, guys not being able to push him around. Um, he also has real strong hands, has long arms, so he, he's able to catch the ball at the point of attack and guys, it's hard to break up that pass. Yeah, how tough is he to defend? Is he one of the best in the NFL, in your opinion? I definitely think he's one of the best. I'm glad he's on my side. <laughs> <laughs> how about Devontae Smith? Uh, there's kind of a good thing that they have going, complement each other well. What makes Devontae so tough to defend? Um, I think it's, uh, his, veteran savvy, his veteran savviness at a young age. You know, he's able to, he, he has really good release off the line of scrimmage. Um, and he runs great routes. He's able to get in and out the breaks. Um, and that's definitely hard, too, when you add in that he can also run and break, break it down the field and uh, create explosive plays. You know, you're new to Philadelphia. They've got a great tandem now there with Slay and you back there. What do you want to tell Eagles fans that they're going to see from you? What are you going to bring to this team? You know, I just want to make plays. You know, um, I had four interceptions last year, and I want to make more plays on the ball. So hopefully I make more plays, um, and that's what I'm hoping to bring to the team, you know? Yeah, the statistics are out there that since yeah. you came into the NFL, you and Slay have the number one and number two most pass defense. What is your goal every year as a corner going into the season? My goal every year? It's to uh, pretty much, you want to win every game, uh, obviously. So you want to put yourself in position to make plays on the ball, uh, create turnovers, um, and obviously lead the league in picks, you know? Yeah. How about uh, coming from the Giants? How much do you know this division, and how does that make you even better, your familiarity with the division? Uh, I'm very familiar with the receivers that are in the division. Um, of course, coaches may change and whatnot, and schemes may change, but I'm very familiar with the receivers. Um, so I think that gives me, you know, an added bonus, you know, coming uh, coming over to Philly. Uh, and right now, I gotta, when the season gets here, I just got to hone in and watch film and then learn the schemes. When you face the Giants twice this year, is it going to be personal? It's not going to be personal, but, I mean, I do play for the Eagles, so I do want to win that game. Uh, so whenever that game comes up, I make it personal then, and then I want to win that game, you know. I'm, there, not, I'm not looking forward to it, though. <laughs> you know? Is there some animosity, though? Because they they released you at a certain date where a lot of the contracts were given out, the big contracts. I mean, how much did that affect you? And, and did, you, um, did you not like the timing of it? As a businessman, you got to understand this is a business. Um, so he was trying to make the best decision for that team. Um, and I was just, I was, um, you know, I was a commodity. 
you know, people wanted me and he was trying to get a trade for me and that's what it was. And I understood that. So regardless of the fact, whenever I got released, I got released and now I'm with the Eagles and I'm glad to be here. You're on a one year deal, right? So is this what we call a prove it deal? I mean, do you want to show that you deserve a long term contract here from the Eagles? I just want to go out here and win games. You know, if, I, if we win games, that means obviously I'm playing well enough. Um, and if I'm playing well enough, I'll probably get some money here or there. So I just want to win games first off. Is it tough to be on a one year deal? I don't think so. You know, I'm a veteran in this league. You know, I approach every year like it's a one year deal because, you know, they can release you at any point throughout your contract. Um, so it's not tough for me. There's been some funny moments with uh, Nick Sirianni mic'd up. And I think Nick was kind of talking with you about, oh, I remember you. You picked off our guy, Phillip Rivers, right? Mm -hmm. um, what's that like, the interaction with your head coach? Uh, he's a pretty cool guy. You know, he's um, he's not too laid back, but, you know, he's serious at, when he needs to be. But he's, he's a little laid back, you know, and I appreciate that because um, he understands what the players need. And, um, you know, he understands the wear and tear that this game puts on your body. So he definitely takes care of us and he looks out for us. Uh, while also making sure that we get the job done. That's a key thing you said right there, the schedule for training camp. You're seeing more off days than maybe in the past. Can you as a defender get ready without maybe hitting somebody as much as you used to in camps? Oh, yeah, definitely. And I, and I play corner as well. So, uh, I mean, for me, it's all about your legs, your lower extremities. So you got to make sure you take care of your lower extremities. Um, and it's also I played a lot of football. So you want to also make sure you get your mental reps. It doesn't have to always be physical. It can, always, it can be mental as well. Also on the mic'd up uh, segments that the Eagles had, uh, you were talking about how much you've been welcomed by the team and how everybody's made you feel. What is this group like, especially since Nick kind of preaches the connection with all of you together? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a veteran group, um, and I think uh, some of the guys in this league have watched me play, uh, so they was kind of aware of who I was and what I bring to the team. Uh, but they're also a pretty cool group. You know, they're very, they're very friendly with everybody that's in the, in the organization, and everybody in the organization is pretty friendly towards me. Um, so I'm, I'm enjoying it. You faced Jalen Hurts. What have you seen when you looked on film and then faced him last year? What have you seen as far as improvements and growth from your quarterback? Uh, he definitely throws a deep ball well. I will say that. And you also got to add in the fact that he's a dual-threat quarterback. So it's always hard to scheme against a dual-threat quarterback because he can beat you with his arm and his legs. And then, um, you know, you add in more, more weapons to his repertoire, you know, he's going to be – it's going to be hard to, to cover them guys over there. So, yeah, when you were game planning against Jalen Hurts with the Giants, that was a big thing, watching out for when he takes off with his legs? Oh, yeah, definitely. I think that's probably, probably one of his strengths of his, strength of his game. Yeah. How about the offense as a whole when you're facing it every day and you see it? Look like the defense did pretty well today. Um, you talked about how that's going to help Jalen. Tell me about the, the weapons they have on offense and maybe the spacing they can get now because of those weapons. Uh, of course, you had A.J. Brown, his strength, um, his ability to catch the ball underneath and take it to the house. Devontae Smith, great route runner. And then uh, you got the guys on the outside with the speed. Um, you know, it just gives you multiple ways to attack a defense. You know, and then on our defense, you know, like you said, we made plays today. We, we got a veteran group. You know, we was out there communicating well today. We was disguising, making it hard for them to read. So I think that's what's going to help them improve. Um, so we had a good practice today. You talked about disguising things and making it hard for the quarterback to read. How about that defensive front where you basically have two defensive lines and I'm seeing them rotate the ends, mm -hmm. some of them dropping back into coverage. How multiple is this defense? Man, we got some athletic uh, DNs and um, linemen. Um, so them being able to get out and drop and also pass rush, um, it allows our defensive coordinator to scheme up a lot of things. How about Slay? Uh, we, we joked about him, but have you ever been around somebody who talks as much as he does? I have. Yeah? I really have. Who? Uh, uh, Trey Boston. Okay. <laughs> but I, but you need a guy like that in your yeah. locker room and in your in your uh, position group because he, like, think it's going to be a roller coaster throughout the season. Not everything's going to go the way you want it to, and you need guys like that to kind of loosen the group up because you don't want them to get too, too tense and get too worried about, you know, the downs. You know, you eventually it's going to come back up, you know? BG, he also talks, right? He also talks a lot, too. I haven't been around him when he starts trash talking yet, so <laughs> I'm kind of looking forward to that to hear what he says. How about uh, the rookie show with Jordan Davis? Oh, yeah. My goodness. Yeah, he was good. He impressed me. You yeah. know, most, most rookies don't get up there and dominate like that. How cool is it, the personalities that these guys also have and, and kind of how you said it keeps the group loose and going? For sure. I mean, you need uh, open, big personalities. I mean, because like myself, I don't really have a huge personality. I kind of sit back and just watch. Uh, so you need guys like that to kind of mix in the group and, you know, and, and give some life to it. So when you were facing the Eagles, did you get a sense of how much the Eagles fans hate the Giants? 
I definitely did. Yeah. I definitely got a sense of that. <laughs> Any experiences you've had or things you've heard or like the buses are coming in? I mean, we've heard other teams sometimes they get egged. Mm -hmm. Any experiences like that? Anything you see? I haven't had any bad experiences. Of course, um, my family members that come to the game, they talk about some of the experiences they experience, just people throwing things and whatnot. Um, but I haven't had any bad experience yet. No, wait, did your family members come and wear Giants jerseys? Um, so when I played for Carolina, I also played Philly. Yeah. And of course, when I was with the Giants, they also wore Giants stuff. So, I mean, they, they didn't have the best time up there. <laughs> so would you suggest maybe not wearing the Giants jerseys or especially the Cowboys jerseys if your family come into the games? Look, they can't come to the game if they're going to wear another jersey <laughs> other than Philly. You glad you're on this side of the rivalry now? Definitely glad. I'm on the, I'm on the rowdy side, so I ain't got to worry about nobody throwing anything on my family members. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a big difference you see at all between New York and Philly? Do you see any differences, or how's it been acclimating to our city? Um, so I just got here. I really haven't been out too much. Uh, but, of course, New York or New Jersey it was right next to New York. So them, ha them having a bigger city next to them, uh, when you go over there, like fans didn't really recognize you much. But, of course, Philly, they're very, um, they're very much – in love with their, their sports teams here. So a lot of times I get recognized when I go out. Yeah. I asked you if you're going to have it be a personal game for you against the Giants. You said no, but you're going to have a chip on your shoulder facing your former team? I mean, I won't have a chip on my shoulder, but of course I have famili familiarity over there with the coaches and the players. So I think it's going to be a fun game. I wouldn't say I'm going to have a chip on my shoulder because I didn't have a chip on my shoulder when I played the Panthers in the past. Yeah. Uh, it was just a fun game to go out there and play and play against old old friends, you know. When you're out on the field, do you get emotional? Do you celebrate or are you kind of more reserved? What kind of expression do we expect to see from you? Uh, you know, I'm kind of reserved, but you know, I didn't win a whole lot in the past. So, I mean, I think I'm gonna be more excited this year because I know the Philly went to the, the playoffs last year. So I'm expecting to win some games this year. What are you expecting? You expecting playoffs? I'm not gonna say I'm expecting playoffs, but I know we want to win games. You know, first you got to win your division. Um, and I also, so I want to play well when we play our division opponents. But you feel you are in a spot that you can contend for a Super Bowl, contend for the division, contend for a Super Bowl? Well, you know, it's 32 teams, and if any of those teams don't think they can contend, you know, for, especially starting over, start, I mean, starting out, you know, it's already over with. So I think we have a strong team. We just got to put everything together, make sure we build our chemistry, um, and start at week one. You got you to win the first game before you can win any of the rest of them. Final question for you. I hear that you used to draw a lot. Yeah, I used to draw a lot when I was younger. Yeah? You know, um, I kind of got away from that, and I hate I got away from that, but I used to draw a lot when I was younger. You going to break it out again? You going to pick it up again at all? Um, I doubt it. I kind of yeah. read now. Yeah? You know, I try to read a book every now and then. Um, so trying to, like, broaden my knowledge and whatnot, so I try to read every now and then. You want to yeah. end with a suggestion to Eagles fans, a book that you like that would be a good book to pick up and read? Uh, Relentless. Yeah? Um, I think by Tim Glover. That's a good book to read. Okay. You going to be relentless this year? Got to. Yeah. I got to. All right, great. Hey, nice catch up, catching up with you and learning Appreciate about you. you. Welcome to town. Thank you. Thanks a lot, James. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. All right, we are now joined by the NFL Network's Mike Garofalo. Welcome back home again here hey. at Eagles Camp, South Philadelphia. Yeah, spent the night at my parents' house last night. How cool is that? It's great. My mother asked me to give her uh, four stars on Yelp or five stars on Yelp or whatever it is this morning. So I'll get to that after this. What's the meal when you come back home in South Philly? I, well, I got back late, but but you, last night was uh, gravy night. So last night would have been, if I had gotten here on time, would have been gravy. I just didn't make it on time. I had to get the kids to bed before I left, go pick up the rental car. It took me too long to get down here. But it's got to be special coming back home here. And now yeah. you're coming down to Eagles Camp here at the Novacare Complex. And there is a lot of expectations this year. Do you think they are warranted? What is the rest of the league thinking about what the Eagles have done this year? Yeah, I think they are warranted. It's, it's, a, it's a really strong roster. Uh, Ian Rappaport and I were on Good Morning Football from right outside here this morning talking about how this time last year it was Deshaun Watson talk. Uh, it was Nick Sirianni's uh, a goofball. Did you see that opening press conference? What kind of head coach is this? He's proven to be anything but, by the way. Uh, and, and the strength of the roster overall, the questions. Now it's about where's the weakness on the roster? Can Jalen Hurts take the next step? Nick Sirianni, can he lead this team now to the promised land versus can he even make this a competitive team? So uh, things have flipped. There's no in-between. I mean, look, you mentioned it. I grew up here. I know there's no in-between. So we went from down here to, you know, now we're probably too high on the expectations, yeah, yeah. right? So 
We asked you last year, who did you think would be the Eagles quarterback this coming year? Yeah. And we actually were just talking about, we don't remember, but, but I mean, Deshaun Watson, Eagles tried. Russell yeah. Wilson, they looked into it. Yeah. Jalen Hurts is back. Yeah. Does he have to show this year? Is this the year they're going to make a decision about Jalen Hurts being their franchise quarterback? Yeah, I, and I think we're we're trying to remember what I think you offered me. The quarterback this time next year will be Jalen Hurts, Deshaun Watson, or none of the above. We have to go pull the footage. Uh, and I think I went with none of the above, right? Uh, I, I probably underestimated Jalen, um, his demeanor, his work ethic, uh, his willingness to get better. And he got better uh, in a lot of areas. He's got to get out get better in those areas that people think he's still not going to be good enough ever in, which is, you know, everything winning from the pocket, uh, seeing what the defense is giving you, making them do things, manipulating them. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I saw a little bit of good and I saw a little bit of bad on day one. Uh, he was a little late on a throw. I think it was to A.J. Brown where Epps picked it off. Uh, but then by the same token, uh, there was a play where he was rolling to his right. He was able to look back and see Quez Watkins coming from his left, which showed me great vision of the entire field. So um, I, he's going to get better. He's too steady and he works too hard to not get better. The question is, how much better is he going to be? That's a great question. And, and I remember interviewing Jerry Jones at the Super Bowl and he actually said, Jalen Hurts has already overachieved because he was drafted in the second round yeah. and he's already overachieved. But how, how vital do you think it is that he's actually getting the same head coach back, the same play yeah. caller for a second straight year? He said yeah. he hasn't had that since high school with his dad. Yeah, 16 years old. Uh, by the way, Jerry drafted his quarterback, what, in the fourth round? So <laughs> doesn't necessarily have to come in the first round. Um, I, I think it's huge. And that's been the talking point here when you talk to people all spring and into the summer now is – now we don't have to work on the, the why. You know, we're doing this, Jalen, because he already knows why. He already knows the reason for everything we're doing. So now let's work on the finer points. Let's work on where the ball should be, how it should come out, when it should come out. Uh, so, you know, you would think that with that uh, continuity that he's had, because even at Alabama, you know, they're rolling things over constantly there. He didn't have anything there. Then he goes to Oklahoma, comes here, coaching turnover. So, yeah, year two into year three for him, absolutely enormous. I don't think I answered your question, by the way, about do they have to commit to him as a long-term guy after this year. After this season, yeah, he's going to be eligible for a contract extension. And at this point last year, we were talking about, well, they got three first-round picks. So they're going to have to make a decision by the time that comes. Now it's now at the end of the season, they'll be eligible for a contract extension. So they'll have to make a decision at that point. You don't have to. You can still let this play out a little bit. You'll have the extra year. You'll pick up the fifth year option, but you can sort of still sort of play this year by year. So let's see. I think we'll probably be somewhere in that mode at the end of the season where he continues to progress. We're not going to throw the 50 million a year or whatever it'll wind up being at that point. Uh, but. Let's keep rolling with Jalen Hurts. That's my prediction anyway. Yeah, and, and you saw maybe they tried to put it too much in his hands last year to start throwing the ball a lot. Yeah. Then they said, okay, we got to run the ball. But then against the Tampa Bay Bucks in the playoffs, when you've got an experienced defensive coordinator mi mixing up looks, we saw some warts for Jalen. So they go get A.J. Brown. Are they going to try to come out and throw the ball again this year? When you go get an A.J. Brown, you have those weapons on offense. Yeah. Or are they going to run the ball like last year? Because I don't think so. You don't think which part? I don't think they're going to run the ball like they did at the end of the year. I think they want to try to be a passing offense. Do you, do you think? Yeah, because you're going to now see teams adjust to that, right? They've got an offseason to figure out what the Eagles are doing scheme-wise, what gives them fits as far as their running game goes uh, to kind of slow that part down and make it. I mean, it's it's. I'll be in Baltimore at some point in the next couple of weeks talking about this with Lamar Jackson. Let's make that guy beat us from the pocket. They're still saying it, okay? If we can – figure out what they're doing from a run game standpoint. And instead of getting seven yards on first down, they're getting three. And now he's got to be in a passing situation. We're feeling better as a defense from that standpoint. You're going to see a lot of that with the Eagles. So let's see what kind of wrinkles defenses can throw. And they're not oblivious to that. They know, hey, we may have to come out on some early downs and throw the football to prove to these teams that we can do it. Do you think, though, adding A.J. Brown, that makes the offense whole? Like Jalen's going to have a lot more windows, a lot more opportunities, going to see man coverage on some of these guys? Yeah, and I also think that 
some simple throws, some some shorter throws, can now turn into bigger gains. This guy is unbelievably strong with the ball in his hands, carrying guys into the end zone at times. Uh, so you'll see a little bit of that on display for sure. He's got a physical element to him, and that's why I think it was smart. It's not like, hey, we've got to get ourselves a guy who's going to be that burner, can beat people down the field and get open. I mean, certainly Devontae Smith has the ability to do that. It's not like they don't have that in the offense. But now we've got a different kind of element here that can play into what we do offensively. Uh, I spoke to an offensive coach this offseason who said that guy is a perfect fit for what they want to do from the offense. He's going to flourish there tremendously. And how about this offensive line? I mean, you might be seeing the last year of the Jason Kelsey, Lane Johnson yeah. guys in their 30s, and they've got some young guys coming up, but you have to take advantage of having this offensive line? Yeah, you do. Um, you know, Lane, Lane Johnson and Jason Kelsey, I feel like we say this every year, could be their last year and they just continue uh, rolling. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think this is you, you've got strength. You've got depth, too. Right now you've got Landon Dickerson and Cam Jurgens, who they think the world of. If you have to lean on these guys uh, and some of these other guys that you've got as far as building the depth to come in and step in and, and, and play, that's what it's all about. I mean, you can come out. I say this every year at training camp. You can come out to training camp and convince yourself that any team is going to be good because there's enough talent and the parity is there. There's enough talent on the top lines for everybody. It's when you have to dip down in your second and third string guys, is the depth there? It's certainly there on the offensive line. That's what they feel good about. You've covered a lot of head coaches and you go around the country and you get time with them and you talk to them. Yeah. What Nick Sirianni did here, I thought was pretty special, starting two and five, then you completely change the offense to run the ball behind that line. And then he's having Shane Steichen call the plays. I remember yeah. when Nick came here, he said, I love calling plays, I'm gonna call the plays. But is he just like, okay, I'm going to totally give up any ego that I have, and this is the best thing for the team? I, I think that's uh, a great a sign of a great leader is a guy who's willing to, uh, you know, spread the responsibility around, but still shoulder the blame, right? He's not hiding behind anything. It's not like, well, that guy's calling plays. No, Nick Sirianni uh, didn't want anybody to know, it seemed like at some points last year, that Steichen was the one calling the plays because it was like, I'm the head coach. Have it, have it on me. Um, so I, I, I respect that. I do. I think he did a nice job. You don't usually see first year head coaches reinvent themselves and change things the way that he did uh, in his first year and have success. So I give him all the credit in the world for that. I, I, yeah, you know, you go back, like I said, this, at this point last year, I'm on the air with NFL Network and we're still talking about that press conference. Yeah, yeah. OK, because that's that's nationally what anybody remembered about Sirianni early on. And I said, look, there's more substance to this guy. And you're going to see it as we go through this. I'm not saying he's going to win a Lombardi trophy, but that guy you saw at the press, that's not him. And you're going to see more depth and you're going to see more poise. And we certainly saw that from him as a head coach. And who would have thunk the next thing that everybody made fun of with the roots growing to become the flower? That's actually what players would start to recite. That, uh, and that helped turn it around. They, they've got, between him and the quarterback, they got a lot of sayings. They got a lot of lo uh, slogans on yeah. T-shirts and all this stuff and hats. Uh, but if it works for you, it works for you. An interesting thing I want to ask you about is the Miles Sanders situation because you know, obviously, I think he would like to run the ball more as any running back would. And he's got a contract situation coming up. See some other guys getting their deals uh, before they're up. What do you think is going to happen with Miles Sanders? Dallas Goddard got his. Jordan Mailata, these other guys got their deals. And you've got Kenny Gainwell now and yeah. some other guys. Well, and Miles Sanders gives you a little bit of everything you want to do from the running back standpoint. I know they think highly of him. Um, and I know the Eagles' MO is usually to lock guys up early. But sometimes when you do that, as a player, you have to say, hey, look, I may do this deal. I mean, go back to Jordan Maialata last year. The Eagles said, look, we're going to do this deal early, but we're going to give you the chance before you're a full-time left tackle to lock in tens of millions of dollars, yeah. which he did. Now, if you play well, you may say, oh, boy, I should be getting paid into the 20s, but it's the risk that you take right now to get that security in exchange. Uh, the running back market is funky though, right? You've got those top end deals that some of these teams are regretting, by the way. Um, and then you've got a drop off once you get to that second tier as far as $8 million a year or so. So if Miles Sanders wants a deal done early, he may have to take something right around there. It's gonna be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, I would always, as a running back, take whatever I can yeah. get before I step on that year, uh, that field in a contract year. But we'll see what Sanders decides. All right, a couple final questions yeah. for you. I'll put you on the spot again. We won't remember what we discussed a year ago when we look at it again. I like to keep score. <laughs> Who's winning the division this year, the NFC East? Oh. 
I'm either going these guys or the commanders. So I think te- people are too low on the commanders. I, when you said the, co- I thought you were saying Cowboys. No, 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 no. Oh. I, I, I'm going to go Eagles just, just for the pure fact that we know teams don't repeat in this division. So I can't give you a hard reason. I mean, I could break it down X's and O's standpoint, but I can't give you a hard reason why the Cowboys are, I mean, the offensive line certainly isn't what it was years ago. I can get into the X's and O's, but I'm going to play on the pure. I can't take the defending division champ because that just doesn't happen in this division. So I'll say it's between the Eagles and the Commanders. This is the better roster. I'll go Eagles. Eagles over Carson and the Commanders. All right. You were here at Eagles camp looking at everybody. And and a couple people say, Nicobe Dean. Like, who, who's going to be the yeah. guy this year? Is there somebody you think that is going to be the training camp darling or somebody that's going to flash or or play earlier than expected and, and kind of surprise me? Yeah, I'll, I'll go deep. I'll stick yeah. I'll take I'll take the layup that you just gave me here because uh, there's a lot of uh, – folks inside this building impressed with his mental makeup and his ability to digest things and look he's he he played in the defense where he he had to have a lot of responsibility he had to know what was going on and he did he's the kind of guy that can go up on the board and digest things and all that stuff and there was no question about that coming into the draft it was all physical stuff um and you know the folks here when they drafted him said well we took him in the third round we almost took him in the second round and we kept asking ourselves, why is this guy yeah. still like, what, what are we missing? Right. Like, yeah, we know there's some physical stuff, but nothing to the point where this guy should be dropping. So I'm going to say Nicobe Dean comes out and makes some plays in the preseason. I think he's going to be a preseason sensation. That's my hunch. I know they're already impressed here. So let's see how it plays out. And he is doing his rookie duty, carrying the Rita's water ice for all the veterans, taking it back in the locker room. So, yeah, good locker room guy. Yeah, I mean, as, as a guy who was the veteran down there at Georgia and probably made the, the freshman do some things, why not? Your turn to be a freshman again, Nicobe. <laughs> all right, I love it. And this is where I really put him on the spot. Starting quarterback next year. <laughs> Jalen Hurts or the field? Jalen Hurts. I'll go Jalen There Hurts. we go. And, and the only thing that could disrupt that is, suppose the Saints go 1-16. and 16. Can I do my math? And, and they've got that pick up there. Uh, maybe that changes things, but uh, I'll go Jalen Hurts. Again, I, I, I was very impressed with his poise, his work ethic, his desire to get better. He's going to be better. He's going to make mistakes. Uh, there'll be some throws where, oh, you know what, he was late on that one and it got picked off, but I think he'll be the quarterback. Now, will he have a $45 million extension? Maybe not, but I think he'll still be the quarterback of this team next year. We'll ask you about the money next year. Hey. At that point, that's what we'll be reporting on, so I'll be ready for it. <laughs> Welcome back home. Always good to Thank see you, and we enjoy your work on NFL Network, as always, Mike. Thank you. Uh, sorry Rappaport couldn't join us. He's doing the McAfee show over there, which I'm going to go disrupt right now. You know what? And, and you know what? Maybe he'll get you the water ice and take care of you this time. Oh, I'm so flagrant.